Okay, we're now going to do for exercise 7b is about critical regions and critical values. So we're going back to our game, which says a prize is given out one in five plays 20% of the time. I've changed the game now. I've changed what I'm actually doing this experiment. Boys listening, please. This time I'm not playing the game 50 times. I've changed it. I'm only going to play it 40 times, okay? And I'm asking a different kind of question. I'm now saying what observed data would make me suspicious that the game was giving out a prize less than 20% of the time. So I'm playing it 40 times. If I'm winning one in five times, how many times would I expect to win? I expect, on average, yes, to win eight times. Now, I want to find out when do I become suspicious that the game is not being very kind and it's giving out prizes less than 20% of the time. What we're trying to figure out here is which of these numbers along the bottom, if I observed it, would make me go, hang on a second, I'm suspicious about what's happened. Doesn't Something doesn't add up. That the probabilities would be lower than 5%. So if it's less than 20% of the time, I'm trying to find out the probability when x is less than or equal to something is less than 5%. I want to find out what is that number there. And we'll be able to do this either by using our calculator or by using our tables. Now, it's not as simple as just seeing which is the first thing that goes below 0 .5, 0 0.05. The answer is not going to be 4. Because if we observed a 4, we actually would look at the whole region of 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. We would add up all of those probabilities together. Because that's what we were doing earlier. We were saying it's 4 or less. So I don't think it's going to be 4 or less. Because I think that this, 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 and this is definitely going to add up to more than 0 0.05. I think it's probably going to be 3 or less. So if I played this game 40 times, and I only won 3 times two times, one time, or zero, I think that gives me grounds to say that the game is rigged. I would reject the null hypothesis, and I would accept the alternative hypothesis. But we're going to do this with some numbers in a second to see what happens. So we're going to guess, roughly, we think that this is going to be a three. That's our prediction by looking at the graph. Okay? This is our prediction. Winning more than 20% of the time is actually now saying, okay, I think this game is being too kind to me. It's giving out a prize so often. It's giving it out way more than 20% of the time. So this time, we're going to be saying the probability that x is greater than or equal to a different value, I'm going to say b, when that becomes less than 0 0.05, the significance level. So just roughly looking here, I don't think it's going to be, it's definitely not going to be 11, because 11 is more than 0 0.05 greater than or equal to 12, even though 12 is less than 0 0.05, when I add on the 13, 14, 15, 16, when I add on all of those, I think that all of those probabilities together will be more than 0 0.05. So if I had to predict probably 13 or 14, I think it's going to be. So I think this is probably going to be 13 or 14 as a prediction. OK? And now we're going to see if we can do this. Um, well, not as a prediction, because you're not going to get a graph like this, are you? You're not going to want to draw a graph to try and figure out. We're going to want to try and do it calculating it accurately. Once we would find these things, by the way, this thing inside here, that x is less than or equal to a certain thing, that's what we call the critical region. If something is inside that critical region, we go, uh-oh, the game is rigged. If something is not inside the critical region, we accept the null hypothesis. Unsurprisingly, A and B here, or three, or one of these ones, they're going to be called the critical values. The critical region is it written as an inequality. So let's actually see if we can calculate this for this game. So we're going to do the less than 20% of the time using the significance level. What I have done is I have taken from the tables, you know these tables that I showed you previously, these ones like this. I've gone to, and these are much better to use for critical regions than your calculator. 
I've gone to n equals 40, because we're playing the game 40 times. And I've gone to the probability being 0 0.2, which is here. And I've just taken a screenshot, and I've put the relevant numbers here. Okay. So we said the probability that x is going to be less than or equal to some value a, it needs to be less than 0 0.05. And we're going to look down here, and we're going to find out the one that is less than 0 0.05, which is the last one uh, that is smaller than 0 0.05, 3. It is this one here, which is exactly what we predicted, wasn't it? We could see that 4 was too high. Is that what we had on the previous page? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, because it's cumulative as well. Yeah, so we knew that 4 was going <coughs> to be too high. So looking at this table, this value whoops, is our critical value. So the value on the boundary of the critical region is called the critical value. So our critical value is 3. The critical region is the range of values of the test statistic that would lead you to rejecting H0 and saying, you know what, the game is rigged. In other words, when the test, t test statistic is less than or equal to three, we would go like, this game is rigged. It's not a 20% 20, 20 chance. It's got to be different. The actual significance level is the actual probability of being in the critical region. What do you think the actual probability of being in the critical region is from looking at the table? Yep, 2.85%. So the actual significance level is 0.0285. And here's the really important thing to kind of learn from this as a little tip, because if you use these tables, it's way better than using a calculator, because you can see all of these numbers all at once. When you do it on the calculator, you see one of them, and then you have to go back, and then you see another one, and then you have to go back. You can see all of them at once on this page. Tip, the low critical value, as in the low end of this, at the top end, is always the first value in the table that falls below 5%, or whatever the significance level is for that particular test that you're doing. So if it was the 10% significance level, it would have been a different critical region. It would have been 4. If it was a 1% critical region, 1% uh, significance level, it would have changed, and the critical region would have been less than or equal to 2. But the, the significance level will always be given to you in the question. Just to confirm, we predicted it was going to be 3, and it was 3 for the critical region. We're now going to do more than 20% of the time, i.e. the game is giving out too many prizes. So we said the probability that x was greater than or equal to b had to be below the significance level of 0.05. I'm going to do a bit of maths here that we will probably do just once, and then from now on we will use a shortcut after we've done this. But I'm going to show you the long way around for this. If I rearrange this, saying the probability that it is greater than or equal to b, that would be 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to b minus 1 has got to be less than 0 0.05. If I move this around, I would have 0 0.95 probability that x is less than or equal to b minus 1. So saying that something has got to be greater than or equal to a value being less than 5% is the same thing as saying um, being less than or equal to 1 less than that being greater than 95%. So I'm just going to look through the table, okay? We are going to find the first thing that is greater than 95%. So I'm going to go down this table. Which is the first one that's greater than 95%? 12. So that means that this thing here is 12. So b minus 1 is 12, which means that b is 13. OK? So let's go back to what our prediction was. Yeah, we actually predicted it was going to be 13 or 14. So the answer was... So we choose the lowest number. You choose the lowest number. No, you don't choose the lowest. We just made a prediction. <laughs> we made a prediction from a graph here. The way we do this as the shortcut is this tip that I've got here. The high critical value is always 
the first value after the one in the table that exceeds 95%. Um, or why have I said or 100% significance level? Or it should say, or if, if it's like a 10% significance level, it would be 90%. That's badly typed. So let's just quickly say what I mean by that. We went down the list, we found the first one that exceeded 95%. And instead of taking 12, we actually just bumped it up by one. And that will always, always work, okay? 12 was the number that said it was uh, greater than 95%. So actually we're talking about it being 13 or more. That's your shortcut you can always do for this. That will always work for the top end of the critical region. You find the one that goes um, just slightly above the 95% and just bump it up by one because of the math that's happening here. So it's always one. It's always one more than what the table shows. So the critical value is 13. The critical region is x is greater than or equal to 13 because we're talking about it being rigged by giving out too many prizes. The actual significance level is 1 minus this probability because we're doing it at the other end. The actual significance level will be 1 minus 0 0.9568, which is 0 Okay. Obviously, I was looking for 95% because the significance level is 5%. If the significance level was 2%, you would be looking at 0.98 instead. And the pattern will always be, for the low end, just literally find the first one that dips below it and take that number. For the top end, you find the one that just goes above it and then bump it up by adding on one. And the reason you add on one is because of this, this maths that we've just demonstrated over here. But that's your shortcut which I use all the time, okay, as long as you've committed it to memory. So we've got three of these things here. I've said determine the critical region when we throw a coin where we're trying to establish if there's a specified bias given the specified number of throws when the level of significance is 5%. So here, this is my first experiment. I'm throwing the coin five times. The null hypothesis is that the probability is 0 0.5, and I think that it is biased towards heads. I think that it's got a probability of being greater than 0 0.5. So what would I be looking for on the table? How would I try and find out what the critical value is going to be for it being, I think it being ba um, ba um, biased towards heads, probability of greater than 0 0.5? The first one that goes above 0.5. Not the first thing that goes above 0 0.5. The first thing that goes above... 0.95, because I'm saying it's probability of it being quite a lot of them happening. So if there's five of them happening, I'm going to find the one that goes above 95%, which is this one. But remember, you bump it up by one when you're looking at the bottom of the table. So the critical region is going to be if x is greater than or equal to five. But you're only playing it five times, so I think the better way of saying the critical region is five. Then you go back to the question and see if it makes sense. I'm saying about flipping a coin. If I flipped a coin and I got five of them all heads, that would make me think that the probability of the coin was greater than 0 0.5, so it seems to make sense, okay? This one is also a probability being greater than 0 0.5, and the significance level is still 5%. So we're gonna go to find the one that is greater than 95 and then bump it up. So bump it up to nine. So the critical region is that x is greater than or equal to, whoops, nine. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're doing a coin 10 times. If you got nine or 10, that would make you think that the probability was greater than 0 0.5. It would make you go like, hold up, this coin seems biased. The difference this time is that the probability is less than 0 0.5. So what am I gonna look for in the table? Say that louder. It's the first one, actually, that um, is 
below 0 0.05. So oh. No, it would, because the probability is less than 0 0.5, we're looking at the top end of the table. So which is the first one that is, which is the biggest one <laughs> below 0 0.05? It's just one. It can't be two because that is bigger than 0 0.05. So it's just going to be one in this case. So the critical region is x is less than or equal to one. Let's just check it makes sense in the context of playing a game. You're flipping a coin 10 times. If you got one or zero, you would expect that the probability was less than 0 0.5. Okay? These are the two tips that I've got written for you that you just need to commit to memory. We're just doing... Yeah, 0 0.05. So if the significance level had changed and it wasn't 0 0.05, it let's, do it, let's do all of them with a 10% significance level. And I'll do them in red. So the 10% significance level would still be this one because it's the greatest one above 90%. Here, might be six because I haven't got the whole table. Okay, so I'd have to see what the whole table was. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have done 10%. Instead of 10%, let's do a... Let's do a 1% instead. So this one would, st this one I don't think is ever going to be 1% because it's still going to always be bigger than that. 1% here, um, so the first one to go above 99%, it would be 9, so it would then become x is greater than or equal to 10. First one below 1% is 0, so it would change to x being less than or equal to 0 or just equal to 0 changing with the significance level. Okay, I think we will take a little pause here.